CataractCoach.com with a cataract surgery combined with removal of a posterior chamber, phagic IOL. About 10 years ago, this patient had an implantation of the phagic IOL for treatment of high myopia. It served him well for a while, but recently the patient developed an anterior subcapsular cataract as the phagic IOL touched the anterior lens capsule. So we'll fill the eye with viscoelastic here. We're going to be able to treat the entire refractive error with just one IOL. So we'll remove the cataract, which of course has power, remove the phagic IOL, and just implant a single toric lens in this case. There's our main incision being made. There, it looks good. And now we're going to go inside the eye, and we need to visco-dissect that phagic IOL up out of the posterior chamber so that it go under the lens, inject dispersive viscoelastic, and slowly tease the lens up. We'll go in through the side port. We can inject some more to protect the corneal endothelium. We just need to be able to grab this edge of it. We get a good firm grasp and we can pull, and this is a very flexible lens that collapses on itself, and there's the entire fake guy well removed in just the one maneuver. We can now proceed with the cataract surgery. We'll do our capsule axis here. Again, I use just forceps. I don't use a bent needle or a cystitome. If you look at the cornea, um, at the left and right sides of your screen, there are actually marks in the cornea that we've already placed, and that's to align our toric eye well. Those marks are along the steep axis of the cornea. So since we're operating temporally, those marks are with the rule in this case, it looks like uh, just off of 90 degrees. Round caps rexus looks great. Again, we want that centered in the visual axis for the patient. At this point, we're going to do hydro dissection. It's a younger patient. This patient's only in his late 50s, young for cataracts. So the lens is relatively soft. We're going to hydro dissect it, maybe a little hydro delineation. We do want to get this lens, there's the delineation ring, we want the lens out of the capsule bag. Again, it's a soft lens, we're not going to need too much phaco energy. A little more viscoelastic to protect the cornea. A little adjustment of the patient, we'll give him a moment to settle down. And I'll put our phaco probe in here and have our chopper, and we should be able to remove this nucleus with very little phaco energy. There's a chop right down the middle and the two halves. We'll emulsify the first half. Really, no need to further subchop this nucleus. Chopper's job now is just to keep the nuclear pieces in front of the probe. Take those down, protect the posterior capsule, and that looks pretty good. So, we'll take out this cortex, maybe a little bit of an epinuclear shell. We'll do the irrigation aspiration probe. In a case like this, a high myop, we don't want to take any chances. We can't risk breaking the posterior capsule. Here's the IA probe going in the eye. We'll remove all this cortex, clean up that capsule bag nicely. You know, the advantage of a phagic IOL for a younger patient is it's going to allow us to retain the accommodation. In a presbyopic patient, certainly over the age of 60, I don't think it makes as much sense. I'd rather put in uh, just a regular IOL by doing a cataract surgery if there is a cataract, or even if there's not, I think the patient's probably better served with a clear lens extraction, and refractive lens exchange. High myops, of course, have a risk of retinal detachment with cataract surgery. This patient had his retinas checked in detail by our vitro-retinal colleague before surgery, and we'll also have him see the vitro-retinal colleague again in the post-op period. So clean up the capsule bag here. And here you can see now the toric lens marks a little bit more obvious. Again, these are three dots that are made in the cornea, the corneal epithelium. Filling up the capsule bag. In a toric lens in particular, we do want a good overlap of the rexus over the optic edge because we want to keep the torque lens at the correct meridian, the correct axis. Here's the lens being implanted now. A single piece acrylic monofocal lens with toric correction. And for this high myo patient, again, we're putting in a lens that's going to leave him just slightly myopic. I think we're shooting for a post-op target of between minus a half to minus a quarter, somewhere in that range. There we go, we're lining up our toric marks, getting them pretty close. 
We'll remove viscoelastic now. Important to remove the viscoelastic from underneath the eyewall optic. This lens in particular is a little bit tacky, so it will stick in place if we don't have that viscoelastic that will adhere to the posterior cap, which is great. Going behind the eye weld, remove viscoelastic, nice high flow setting, high vacuum settings, really flush out any of that viscoelastic. Here it's a cohesive viscoelastic, so a lot easier to remove. And then we can remove it from the anterior chamber as well. Finally, we'll just make sure our torque lens marks are lined up with the marks on the cornea, and then seal up the incisions and we'll be done with the case. So interesting case here. Please read the article for more information of how to plan for these cases, how to do the lens calcs, etc. That'll all be listed. There's using the chopper just to dial the lens around. You look at the two Purkinje images of the light reflexes, make sure those are lined up as well. And that looks pretty darn good.